Um, I feel like I should give a little bit of my background in order to explain why it is that I feel that an art form that has been around for 400 years is not only relevant today, but essential. Um, I was born in Russia into a musical family. Usually when you hear that phrase, by the way, it means that your uncle played the didgeridoo and that your aunt enjoyed listening to records. Um, <laughs> in my case, it was a family disease. My mother is a concert violinist. I'm fond during interviews when asked, oh, does your mother also play the violin? I'm fond of responding, uh, no, I also play the violin. <laughs> um, my father was an opera conductor, and uh, uh, he passed away when I was one and a half. It was his deathbed wish, my father was a sadist, I now realize in retrospect, it was his deathbed wish that I be brought up as a violinist, or as a musician at least, but a violinist more specifically, so that I would be like my mother. It was also his wish that my mother, as he was in his final illness, play Bach. Um, my mother told me years later that she seriously contemplated suicide after my father died. She had lost, in the space of three years, her parents um, and then my father. And following his wish of playing Bach, she found shelter. So as the Soviet Union's golden girl, a winner of three major international competitions, she was performing a great deal, and none of it gave her the kind of shelter that Bach did. But what was more amazing to me, in retrospect, is that none of her vast circle of friends, none of her relatives, no one and nothing could give her the shelter that a collection of sounds could. And the reason I have a mother is because she had Bach. Subsequently, after we emigrated from the Soviet Union, um, well, I should point out for those of you who are not familiar with the process of emigration, it's not about getting an airline ticket and packing up your belongings. It's about being stripped of everything. Uh, we were not allowed to take, obviously, furniture. We were not allowed to take a great many of our possessions. We were not allowed to take, uh, among other things, my father's musical library, his orchestra scores. My mother had to ransom them out page by page from the Soviet government. And my mother, a concert violinist, was not allowed to take her violin. So we literally arrived in the West not merely penniless, but prospectless. And the one thing, once again, that saved my mother, that saved me, was music. Her training in music, her being known somewhat in the West uh, as a sort of cult level uh, as a violinist, and therefore as somebody who already had a support network of friends. It was that support network, by the way, that, well, I'm pointing to the wrong violin. This is my new instrument. But the violin in my uh, case, the other violin in my case, is the violin that her support network of friends was able to smuggle out of the Soviet Union so that my mother could ply her craft. Uh, interestingly enough, it was smuggled out in the Italian diplomatic pouch wearing a doll's dress inside of a doll box. Um, Twice, music saved me. So music is relevant to me, sure. How is it relevant to you? Um, my students uh, will tell you that I find an intersection in music between what they are studying in other classes and what they are studying in violin lessons. You want to talk about how long a note is? You're talking fractions. You want to talk about what was going on in box day? You're talking history. You want to talk about why it is that you can hear when I play out of tune, but you can't hear when you play out of tune? You're talking neurology. Um, at every turn, there is some sort of a, an interrelationship between music and something else. But it's always music that tends to be the nexus, the point of intersection. Fine. So a student who decides, through whatever masochistic reasons, to uh, study violin, by the way, for the parents here, don't let them. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's their life that has led them to music. How is it relevant to you? I hold that music is the most unique of art forms. And art, of course, is the most essential thing of a society. It is what we leave as a society behind ourselves. Think of ancient Rome. What are you thinking of? You're thinking of architecture. You're thinking of poetry. You're thinking of drama. Um, as a society, also, it is in art that we find the most common language, a language without vowels. 
Uh, it is in art that we find something that takes us outside of an everyday existence. What are you getting for your grocery list? Uh, what is the next errand you have to run? Oh, you had a bad day at the office, but you know, probably other people pending execution have had worse days. How do you experience life at a more than quotidian level? And it keeps coming back to music. Sure, other art forms will take you outside of yourself, um, but think about a painter. He creates the painting, the, that work of art will remain there long after the painter is gone. A dramatist will create a play, and in spite of the fact that it's better to see it in the theater, you can still read the play. But music is the only art form where one creator makes a work of art, another creator per performs the work of art, and a third group creator, namely you, change that work as you hear it. The piece you just heard sounded different to them than it sounded to you. It sounded different to you than it sounded to you. The interpretation that you put on it is going to be just like you put onto a work of literature times 10. Because there is no word, there is no syllable of actual speech to which you can attach meaning. It's all completely subjective. Um, I'd like to actually wrap up as I began with a, a piece of music. This is not a complete piece. Um, it's a, the, the beginning excerpt of a, a larger piece, but the larger piece demands a full-scale orchestra. So proving today's theme of the power of everyone, um, we need the power of 88 people behind me. So. Um, but the opening section of this piece, Ravel's Tzigan, is very much that kind of a monologue where it's all words, it's all speech patterns, it's all commas and periods and paragraphs, and it has not one consonant in it. As you hear it, I would like for you to imagine what your life would be like, and then please take a Prozac immediately after, uh, <laughs> if you, your everyday emotional gamut ran this spectrum. So the opening section of the Maurice Ravel Tzigan means gypsy. So if I play an out of two note, it's okay.
Fade to black. <laughs> 